Everybody here has been involved in change efforts, and we all have that little thing in the back of our mind about will this be different. If there's a policy rage in the nation brewing, it's around this notion of competency and knowing it and showing it when you know it and moving on, which will be a game changer for us in terms of educational structures and accountability. This is not about shifting the schedule a couple of minutes at the end of the day anymore. It's about rethinking the school year. It isn't about thinking about how to squeeze some more blood out of the rock around school funding. It's about thinking fundamentally differently about money. You need to have a shared benefit for people who are playing the role of part-time educators. And like higher ed, at some point the adjunct educators will make up the majority of teachers in K-12 education. We do not have it figured out. Institutional streams of resources in a deeply personalized, decentralized, student-centered environment will not continue to go only through institutions. Things are going to get cut. The question is how to move to integrated, creative, student-centered designs with less money and do it year-round. Well, now that is a challenge. How is this an opportunity? If we're willing to pay for the achievement of competency versus endurance, right, then are we willing to pay someone directly who demonstrates competency? Not the teacher or the system, but the learner. If a student comes to your community and is able to actually test out in all the matter over a year or so, because they do self-acceleration, do they get a check with their certificate? Now, as nonsensical as that sounds, I don't think that's the future system, but that scenario and its actual uh, cogency, given the, the notion of competency, points out and illuminates the issues that relate to school funding, because we are in a big mess this way. And as each of you moves through a stage from information to, through personal concerns to what it takes to do it into implementation, you will forget the concerns of other people. And we can't do that, especially if we want to enlist the greatest army known to education reform, which is our teaching corps. There's one of a, a couple of Native Americans standing on the shore of a place that's got to be New England. And there's a couple of ships out in the harbor. And the byline, of course, is the, the, the quote on the bottom is, if we just ignore them, maybe they'll go away. Right? And unfortunately, we in this room have a challenge because the things you aspire to, all the contextual stuff I talked about, the accountability, assessment, the standards, the teacher rules, you were invited to give input to your state policy makers because they're open. I'll tell you that's not enough. I've lived that role. If you think that the folks, that Jenny and her colleagues in the state board are just sitting there not pulling the trigger on bigger policy issues, you're wrong. It's not a matter of just knowing what needs to get done. It's providing the political and public will and pressure to get it done. And that's the age we're in. And that's about making a decision about trying to build public demand. Our institution systems are resilient. They're resilient to change. If school and education is like an old house, it's not, we cannot put on a new coat of paint or build new appliances or even add an addition. We need to get down to the foundation. People understand this more than you might know. We are the ones who are in love with our model. The customers are in love with their children. And they, all they want is our undivided attention on building promising futures for them. That's all they want. They don't care how we do it. We say they're in love with the classrooms they grew up in. They are. They don't have anything better to love. Tom Carroll, I believe, used the Margaret Mead coach, a quote that said, never doubt what a, that a small group of thoughtful, committed people can change the world. And I would ask you, what could a small group of thoughtful, dissatisfied, committed people do? What can a larger group of thoughtful, dissatisfied, committed, and informed people do? And so my real question is just what can you do?